Hey there, essential oil enthusiasts and curious minds alike. Welcome to my channel, where we're all about unlocking the power of essential oils, both practical and spiritual. I'm your guide, Kitty O'Brien, and I'm not just an essential oil lover, I'm an educator and herbalist. And I'm here to show you how these fragrant friends can transform your everyday life from DIY cleaning solutions that make you have sparkle to natural remedies that suit the soul. Hit that subscribe button, grab your favorite diffuser, and let's unlock the magic of essential oils together. And if you watch this video, to the end, I will show you how you can download a free guide with a hundred essential oil uses and their cautions. Hey, sleepyheads. Remember that foundation we built last week? Well, this week we're taking it to the next level. We're building on your healthy sleep habits to dive deeper into the world of natural sleep helpers. So think of it as adding power ups to your sleep journey. We're ditching the chemical cocktails woohoo, and we're embracing the goodness of mother nature. We're talking about herbal teas, essential oils, magnesium, and soothing yoga poses, all aimed at boosting sleep quality and helping you achieve that deep, restful slumber. So why natural remedies? Because sometimes the best solutions come straight from nature offering all those beautiful benefits without the side effects. And all it takes is a little tweak to unlock the magic of eight hours of glorious slumber. So grab your yoga mat, your favorite mug, and get ready to power up for deeper, dreamier sleep. And today we're covering four topics, including um, the way food affects our sleep, and we're interviewing Jackie, a nutritionist, on that, so keep watching. But let's start with natural sleep remedies our herbal heroes. So meet your new squad of chamomile, valerian root, lavender, lemon balm, and passion flower. These botanical beauties whisper sweet nothings to your nervous system, lulling you towards tranquility. We'll explore how to brew herbal teas, harness the power of essential oils, and choose reliable herbal products. Secondly, we're going to look at relaxation reboots. Let's trade those Netflix binges for mindful moments of meditation, deep breaths, and gentle stretches. We'll guide you through simple techniques to melt away tension and prepare your body for slumber. Imagine moonlit yoga poses and progressive muscle relaxation that turns your worries into stardust. And thirdly, we are going to be looking at soothing rituals. Remember that warm bath and that good book combo you loved as a child? Well, it's time to revisit. We're going to explore the power of creating a personalized bedtime routine, whether it's journaling in your day, listening to calming music, or simply reading under soft light. Make it your haven of peace. Let's talk about herbal heroes deep dive. Okay, let's look at let's look at this beautiful topic. So I am so lucky to be studying with herbalist Brianna Shunak, she, she, <laughs> excuse me, who is founder of Moss Medicine. And I can't tell you how much I'm enjoying it. She has over 200,000 followers and her magic is, her knowledge is magic. So let's dive in and explore the history of herbalism and its hostilic approach, addressing physical, emotional, energetic, and spiritual aspects. So why herbal medicine? Well, firstly, it empowers us to be our own healers, align with our needs and values. And secondly, it's affordable, accessible preventive medicine, reducing reliance on costly interventions. So how does it work? Like, how, how does it even work? Well, these herbs contain active compounds, also known as chemical constituents, that give their healing properties, okay? So these plants constituents interact with our bodies in many different ways. And I'm just going to give you a couple of examples. So alkaloids are nitrogen con containing compounds such as caffeine, nicotine, and morphine. And you've probably already heard about those. Alkaloids can have a range of effect on our body, including stimulating the nervous system, reducing pain, and affecting our mood. Curcumin is an active compound found in turmeric, and it has anti-inflammatory properties, and can also help reduce pain and swelling in the body. 
okay, and you've probably used turmeric in your cooking. Tannins help to tighten and tone that body tissue. With flavonoids are rich in antioxidants and help prevent ourselves from damage. And lastly, terpenoids have antibacterial, antifungal and antiviral properties, and they can also have antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects on the body. Whoa, loads of tongue twisters there. Loads of tongue twisters. But discovering the right herbs can truly enhance your well-being and promote better sleep. So let's look at this um, in a little different view, okay? Different perspective. So traditionally, um, well, the herbs were grown in the garden, weren't they? So we can easily grow herbs in our own gardens and they can be found in the local environment, making them a cost-effective option for maintaining our health. But please remember to consult your doctor our healthcare professional before you try any new herbs um, for any health problems or sleep. So we're going to look at a tiny little example of herbs, starting with the oldest one, which is chamomile. Okay, and chamomile was one of the oldest herbs recorded on record. Okay, it's also known as Roman chamomile. So let's talk about chamomile tea benefits for sleep and drinking chamomile tea before bed um, may actually help you um, have a restful slumber. Chamomile tea is not technically a tea as it doesn't contain any tea leaves. Rather, it's a herbal infusion made from the dried flowers, made from dried chamomile flowers. So chamica- cam- chamomile <laughs> has traditionally been used to a relaxation and stress release, and some people can find it calming before bed. It's also a rich source of a special plant compound, um, called an apigen, and apigens are plant compounds found in many fruit and vegetables, but mainly in parsley, celery, celeric, and chamomile, obviously. So these are the most common sources. And these common and these compounds have been shown to possibly exert anti-anxiety effects, and when consumed at a high dose, may also have sedative effects. So aside from sleep and anxiety, chamomile tea has been linked to several other potential health benefits, including the potential to reduce menstrual pain and inflammation and to help lower blood sugar levels. So essential oil of chamomile is extensively used in the cosmetics and aromatherapy business, okay? So are you ready to tap into this magic? Because you're thinking, this sounds great, but how do I use it? Well, let's unlock um, its beautiful powers. So here's how to unlock its calming powers for your skin, hair, and mind. So Pamper your skin and hair by adding a drop or two to your favorite moisturizer, shampoo, or conditioner. It's like a spa day for your senses, okay? And you feel amazing. Then sip and soothe. So feeling tense? Drop, mix a drop with your herbal tea or a hot drink for a gentle internal hug. And if you want that dreamland drift, create a peaceful bath time ritual by diffusing the oil or apply a drop diluted in a carrier oil to your feet before slipping under those covers. Okay, sweet dreams. And a little bonus tip here. So if you like the aromatherapy magic, so put um, three to four drops in your diffuser and let this beautiful fragrance diffuse and it will work its magic. It's just so wonderful. You can use it internally. So you can dilute one drop in four ounces of liquid, um, but remember to consult your doctor first if you are gonna use it internally. Or you can put it in a little veggie capsule as well. But remember, a little goes a long way and try to always dilute it with the carrier oil for topical use. Please keep out of reach of children, obviously, and consult your doctor if you're pregnant, nursing, or taking medication. And don't forget to avoid those sensitive areas like your eyes and your inner ears. So now go forth, my beauties, and enjoy those blissful benefits of Roman chamomile. And our next herb we're going to look at is lemon balm. And this is a well-loved nervogen known for its ability to calm and restore the nervous system. So lemon balm is part of the mint family, and it has been used since the Middle Ages. Lemon balm may also have mild sedative properties, which can help to reduce feelings of stress and tension. And this is why it's popular herb for promoting restful sleep and managing our mood. So let's tap into the magic of how to use lemon balm. Let's talk about how to use it properly. Don't be fooled by its name. Okay, lemon balm scent 
and taste offers a lovely surprise. While it lacks the punch of a real lemon, it boasts a rich, deep aroma with woody undertones, especially when dried. And for lemon lovers, fear not, newer cultivators pack a brighter lemonier punch. So this versatile herb shines in both hot and cold teas, blending beautifully with black tea and other herbal allies like apple mint, um, verbena, and even spices like aniseed and fennel. And its magic extends beyond the cup though. So infuse leaves and flowers in a vinegar for a unique herb to twist or whip up a batch of fragrant jelly with a surprise kick. So are you feeling adventurous? Lemon balm elevates creamy dressings, dips and spreads and adds a fresh touch to fruits, salads and green punches. And for a little pro tip here, toss some young lemon, uh, young leaves into your next batch of shortbread for a sugar or sugar cookies for a delightful lemony surprise. And there's more to lemon balm than just the taste buds. This sometimes unassuming herb possesses power so, pow, bleh, powerful medicinal properties, making it a versatile wellness warrior. Passion flower. Okay, that's the next herb we're going to talk about. So forget what you know about flowers. Passion flower isn't just a pretty face. There are over 500 of these beauties out there and some have a secret talent which is calming your nerves. That's right. For centuries, people have used passion flower for its relaxating and anti-anxiety busting powers. But how does it work? Passion flower might help boost. Now, this is a really big tongue twister, so I'm just going to say the abbreviated version G A B A, um, which is a natural chemical that lowers brain activity, which may help you um, relax and sleep better. Imagine it as a tiny little peacemaker, keeping your nerve signals in check. Now, beyond calming your mind, passion flower is like a superfood for your skin. It's oil packed with vitamin A, calcium and fatty acids is a like skin loving dream. So you've got dryness, you've got wrinkles, passion flower oil comes to the rescue, adding a healthy glow and fighting off those unwanted lines. But passion flower's story gets even more fascinating. Native Americans used it for everything from wounds to ear aches, while the Spanish explorers saw a religious symbol in its shape, naming it after the passion of Christ. In Europe, it is a go-to for restless nights and anxiety and even appears in some beverages. So what a versatile herb. So how do you unlock passion flowers magic? So let's look at tea time. Steep some dried passion flower in hot water for a calming cup. Liquid courage, you can opt for one of those little liquid extract capsules or tablets. And remember, always chat with your doctor before adding anything new to your routine. Um, they can help you navigate the, the potential risks and benefits, okay? So it's, it's always important to keep your doctors in the loop. So we know passion flower is more than just a pretty face. It's a natural ally for a calmer you and a glowing complexion. So give it a try and see if it unlocks your inner peace and radiant skin. Now we have lavender with its enchanting scent and calming vibes. It's pretty much just the whole package. It is a powerhouse of relaxation and well-being and packed with those wispy fragrant oils that dance in the air is no wonder ancient Romans and Egyptians loved soaking in lavender baths. So what is that secret that lavender has? Well it has versatile oils which evaporate literally like tiny little fairies into the air it means the oils evaporate very easily at room temperature and that piece is not just for your nose lavender can turn down the volume on stress like if you're feeling like a wound up toy stuck on overdrive it can really help um, calm your body and like that magic um, to help your mind unwind and just ready for sweet dreams and also lavender can kiss those skin woes goodbye from healthy glow to clean, clear complexions, lavender skin is like super, super powers and leg legendary. And it's no wonder it's a star ingredient in so many beauty products. So you can also use it to elevate those everyday moments by adding a drop or two to your tea for a soothing sip or diffusing its calming fragrance to transform your space into a tran tranquil heaven. So are we all ready to unlock lavender? Here's how we do it. 
dreamy tea time. So infuse your herbal teas with a drop or two of delicious lavender as a relaxing treat. And for the aromatherapy bliss, fill your diffuser with lavender's calming scent and let its magic work. And for fitty pampering before bed, rub a drop diluted in a carrier oil onto your feet for a soothing bedtime ritual. And remember, lavender can cause possible skin sensitivity, so it's always good to dilute it with a carrier oil. And please consult your doctor before you do, especially if you're nursing or you're pregnant or you have any health concerns. So it's a timeless charm and endless benefits. Lavender is an essential oil that's worth keeping close at hand. So go forth now and unlock its beautiful, calming magic and embrace the serene life. And our next herb we're looking at is valerian, typically comes from valerian root. So it's a plant with a history of run, uh, it's a plant with its history running as deep as its root system. From the Latin valeria meaning to be well, valerian is a perennial flowering plant with pink blossoms that bloom in spring when the plant's roots are harvest. And is one of the oldest and most well-studied qualities of the valerian essential oil is its ability to restore and possibly support restful feelings dating back to ancient Greek and Roman times. The oil itself is uh, steam distilled from the valerian root and it's rich in very big, long, complicated words I struggle to say. So I'm just going to pop them up on the screen, which are known for their relaxing properties. So how do we unlock valerian's magic? Well, sleepy sips. Add a drop to your evening tea or warm drink for a gentle nudge towards dreamland. And please do not use more than one drop a day, okay? Culinary creations. So valerian root can add a unique earthy depth to savory and sweet dishes. Think cozy stews or unexpected dessert twists. Restful rituals. We have those moments of unrest we can turn to valerian you know we can diffuse its aro uh, grounding aroma or rub a diluted drop onto your wrists for a soothing natural calm and please remember while valerian has a long history um please consult your doctor before using it especially if you're pregnant or taking any medicine so we can start with a small amount and adjust as needed so go forth and embrace the calming powers of valeria the sleep warrior from ancient times and sweet dreams will await. And now we've looked at how to incorporate herbs into your daily life. The possibilities are so vast, ranging from the herbal teas, the essential oils, to tinctures and incorporating them even into your cooking and bath time routines as well. So the key here is to explore and find what works best for you and have a personalized routine. By remembering and embracing this beautiful herbal medicine and understanding the unique properties of these plants, you empower yourself to take charge of your well-being. Herbalism isn't just a practice, it's a journey. It's a journey of self-discovery and holistic healing. So, is there an essential oil blend that incorporates all of the above? The answer is yes. Let me introduce doTERRA Serenity Sleep System. So sweet dreams are made of this. Ready to ditch the sheep counting and wake up feeling like a rested rock star? Well, enter the doTERRA Serenity Sleep System, your three-step bedtime bestie. Combine this three-step system with smart sleep hygiene habits to get the rest you deserve. I'm so excited. So we've got phase one, which is aroma lullaby. As you dim the lights and wind down, breathe in the sweet scent of the serenity blend. Lavender, cedarwood, and vanilla dance in the air, whispering sweet dreams and prepping your mind for restful slumber. Phase two, pop a chill pill, okay, with the serenity soft gel. So inside we've got L-Lycerine, which helps your body relax its chill vibes, while Cherry Tart gives your melatonin production a boost. Sleep potion, more like a sleep powerhouse. Phase three is calm feet and dreamy sheets. So before slipping under the covers, mas massage the serenity stick onto your feet and pulse points. Its earthy aroma grounds you as you drift off, leaving your worries at the door. And for a little bonus serenity boost, pair this dream team with smart sleep hygiene habits for the ultimate slumber assured. Now, 
we talk about quality here because quality matters. Okay, so the Serenity Restful Blend features CPTG, Certified Pure Tested Grade Essential Oils, which is the gold standard for purity and potency. And not only that, we are green and clean. Okay, so the Serenity Stick with Valerian Oil is free from nasties like parabens and felsites, which, you know, it's just calming vibes and they're all beautiful and natural. And this new... Oh my goodness. Okay. So we've got some news here. In 2024, we've got the new sleep buddy system coming out. Okay. It's the bedtime kit. And this is a limited edition sleep haven with, which comes with a mulberry mask, serenity linen, um, serenity linen mist, excuse me, and these lovely soft gel capsules. So, so excited. A word of caution now, remember, depending on where you are in the world, doTERRA's website might advise differently about taking oils internally. For example, if it, you live in the USA, um, it states it's safe to take lavender internally. But if you live here in England, it doesn't state that on the website because of the UK government legislation. Sorry, but it is, you know, make your decisions. So go forth, conquer the land of sleep, armed with the doTERRA serenity sleep system and make educated choices. Now let's talk about something some people aren't a fan of. Okay, so millions of people do struggle with sleep, but before you reach that third cup of coffee, there's something that you might want to try first. Okay, and it's much, much simpler. And we're talking about we're talking about exercise here. So it might it might sound counterintuitive, but regular gentle exercise can actually be a powerful sleep aid, especially combined with this stuff. And here's the science. When you move your body, you release endorphins and these feel good chemicals that naturally help you relax and reduce stress. Exercise also helps you regulate your body's natural sleep and wake cycle, (coughs) excuse me, making it easier for you to fall asleep and stay asleep. But don't worry, you don't need to like go to hit the gym and be like a cross fitness trainer or anything like here to reap the benefits. They're just really simple, gentle exercises. And here are some examples you can do before you go to bed. Okay. So yoga for sleepy heads, gentle yoga poses like a child's pose or a cat cow or a forward fold can lengthen your muscles and release tension. Just 10 to 15 minutes on your mat can work wonders, or you can have a stroll into sleep. So a short, peaceful walk outdoors or around your neighborhood can help wonders and help do wonders for your sleep. The fresh air, the gentle movement are just a calming combination. Or you can stretch your way into slumber by simply, by like simple stretches like leg swings, arm circles, and gentle neck rolls can improve your flexibility and release tension, making it so much easier to drift off. Or breathe easy for sweet dreams. Deep, slow breathing exercises like diaphragmatic breathing can activate your relaxation response and calm your nervous system. Try inhaling for four, holding for four, and exhaling for eight. And remember, the key is to find what works for you. So start with just a few minutes of exercise before bed and gradually increase the duration and intensity as you feel comfortable. Okay, so... Exercise isn't just about the physical health, it's about holistic well-being and by incorporating these simple movements into your bedtime routine, you can finally say goodbye to the sheep and say hello to sweet, restful sleep. So put on your comfy clothes, find that quiet spot and give it a try. You might be surprised at how quickly you drift off and if you have kids, get them involved and they can do this before their bedtime as well. Okay. So now warm bath talk. Hey, why, why do we do warm baths and books? Have we ever wondered how this works and why is it a match made in heaven? So it's science, my friends, the gentle heat of the bath relaxes your muscles while the engrossing story pulls your mind away from your worries. Bonus points for those flickering candlelight, by the way, because they're instant chill vibes. But the magic doesn't just stop there. You, yes, you hold the key to unlocking your ultimate slumber sanctuary. Now, try journaling, listening to music, soft lights, you know, maybe your perfect 
ritual involves, you know, literally just sitting there and penning down your daydreams and your adventures in a journal. Perhaps calming music can take you back on a sonic journey to sleep town, or maybe it's simply curling up with a good book under soft lamplight, the words weaving a peaceful world around you. The possibilities are endless. So remember, the key is to find what makes you tick. Experiment, explore, and discover what truly sends your worries packing, and welcome in that calm. For me, chamomile tea and a gentle stretch works wonders. For my son Harrison, my three-year-old, he loves the serenity oil diffusing in the air and a gentle massage on the pulse points with the serenity stick with valerian oil, which I left upstairs, funny enough. <laughs> Forgot to bring it down for the video. But my point is personal. So get creative, embrace that quiet and make a bedtime um, ritual of self-care and serenity. And I have to share this little photo of him sleeping. And like he, he has autism. So, you know, routine is so important for him. And soon you'll be saying goodnight to tossing and turning and hello to slumber so deep you'll wake up feeling oh like a well-rested superhero. So tonight, as the world winds down, light your personal sleep torch, embrace your unique ritual and drift off to dreams as sweet as victory. And remember, please share your favourite bedtime rituals in the comments below and let's inspire each other. You know, we can really do this together and I really believe that. So let's share, let's inspire and don't forget to like and subscribe for more adventures and restful sleep. All right, but before we close up this wonderful video, I would love to introduce some dietary tweaks. So food is fuel, even for sleep. And we'll discuss with Jackie how magnesium rich bananas and almonds, tropophan, packed turkey and tofu and melatonin infused tart cherry juice can become your nighttime allies. No heavy meals or sugary snacks before bed though. Let's keep it light and sleep friendly. Now let's welcome in Jackie Barber and Jackie has been offering nutritional therapy and health and advice in Essex since 2002. She is a healer trainer for the Healing Foundation and delivers workshops on nutrition, meditation, mindfulness and spiritual soul subjects. And here she is, my wonderful viewers. Hi, Jackie. Thank you so much for joining us today on our 30 day sleep challenge. I'm very excited about this topic because I'm learning all about ultra processed foods and my diet is changing with more homemade stuff and, and my sleep is rubbish at the moment. So I will be definitely be taking some wisdom here. Um, would you like to introduce yourself for our lovely listeners? Oh, gosh. OK. Hi, Kitty. Thank you for inviting me, first of all. Um, so I'm Jackie from Pure Balance. Um, I work very much with nutrition and food intolerance testing, but I'm also a healer. I train healers, including the lovely Kitty. Um, and I work with some hypnotherapy, flower essences, and I, I deliver um, relaxations really to sort of local communities and stuff, which is really nice. Uh, been in business for 21 years now. So yeah, that was a big birthday last year. Um, but still love what I do. I love bringing it all together and working holistically. I know today we're, we're going to talk about the nutrition side, um, but often when I see a client, it will be a combination of things. So, you know, we might work with some healing and nutrition and, and bring it all together that way. So, yeah, different different tools for different people. Yeah, and I love the approach of like seeing the person as a whole um and 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 dealing with all aspects of them because i i work in the nhs and it's very much like let's treat the symptoms but the holistic approach is very much like you know it's everything isn't it it's the spiritual it's the physical it's the emotional so i love that love yeah. that approach yeah so, a couple of questions here um okay. the first one is how does the food that we eat affect our sleep okay i think so people probably automatically think about what they can eat to help them sleep like before bedtime and we'll, we'll we'll look at that later shall we but i think it's it's important to mention that what we eat during the day is um can really have an impact on on how we sleep um it, you know if we are filling ourselves with with rubbish during the day um it, it's it's just not gonna bring us sort of recovery and health um 
one of the one of the important things I find is making sure that the blood sugar is balanced. Um, when when you've got healthy blood sugars, yes, it, it helps with sleep, it helps with weight management and energy levels as well. So that's one of the like the foundation things that I always have in place for my clients. Um, the easiest way that we can make sure that our um, blood sugars are more balanced. Um, one would be to eat regular. Um, you know, a lot of people, they're, they're skipping meals or they're skipping breakfast, that sort of thing. But eating regular is a really good thing. And making sure that you've got protein in each meal, that helps to stabilize the blood sugars. And it it, it um, slows down the speed that your body uses, like the carbohydrates and stuff. So that's really important. Um, in, in particular for vegetarians and vegans, because a lot of them, they're not getting enough protein. Um, so that's something to look at. Um, the other thing that can affect the blood sugar balance would be uh, food intolerances. They they do have an impact. So, you know, if you've not had those checked, that's that's a good idea. Um, but yeah, also having huge meals can upset the blood sugar balance. Um, there's a lot of people that will sort of go most of the day without hardly eating anything. Then at the end of the day, they'll have a huge meal and it, it will either sort of send them to sleep really quickly in the evening, which is probably not what you want at sort of seven, eight o'clock. Um, or, or they're, you know, suddenly they're, they're wide awake because they've suddenly had food. Um, and when it comes to bedtime, they're probably still digesting that big meal. So that, you know, that's something that it's a good idea to avoid before bedtime. Um, but generally, you know, get getting good fresh food in your diet each day is, is just going to really help. And I think getting to know your body, we were talking about, you know, individual needs. Everybody's needs are different. So if you like really... Um, get used to how your body reacts to certain foods and it may be that that that, that will highlight like a food intolerance so um yeah just become aware watch what your body's doing and notice the changes because some foods will you know almost trigger like a spike and and some foods will just act in a calming way for you yeah i really learned about the the big meals recently because last year I got diagnosed with EDS syndrome and I didn't know but one of the, the big no-nos is having massive meals so I would go the whole day like juggling everything not eating properly and then having like a massive meal and my stomach was like like really suffering yeah feel, like awake all night in pain because of my stomach yeah. so for me now it's like I have to like eat regularly but smaller meals and and that's how I've learned how to deal with that a little bit um, because I was terrible for it, you're like doing a long shift, and then you just you don't get a chance, and or you rush your food, and or it's convenient. Yep. <laughs> I was terrible for grabbing convenient foods, which are high in like sugars and fats and salts. But now I'm I'm trying to like get my five in a day, cooking a lot of the stuff from scratch, um, which has really helped with my son's eczema because he used to get terrible eczema. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, looking at staying away from e-numbers because he's got hyperactivity. Because <laughs> he used to like wake every two hours and I couldn't figure it out. So when I took the okay. swatch out, like the, you know, you can dilute it down. And I started like, just, yeah, I guess I had to keep a little food journal and just really test things out and sort of get used to it. And and like you said, be more present in your body. Because I, I really didn't pay much attention to my body. It was like, we weren't even on speaking terms. <laughs> you know I think yeah, I think you're right I think you know in some ways we really need to go back to basics to um not so much your parents but what my parents and my grandparents used to eat because you know you didn't have the e-numbers you didn't have the the highly processed foods um and we really you know when I say to clients you know just take it back to basics you know meat veg it, it's that easy yeah um, obviously not if they're vegetarians um but yeah, it, it's it's just cutting out all of that rubbish. And you'll notice as well that, you know, weight just changes really quickly when when you get rid of all, all of that food that's not real food. Yeah. And <laughs> just eat real food. <laughs> it's 
like the other day I was Harrison picked up a cake from the shelf and I put it back because I was like the expiry date on this is in three months <laughs> like what is this like, yeah yeah that is a worry a day or two wouldn't it so it's like the preservatives they use as well but yeah oh well thank you for answering those questions and then I got one more I got are there any foods that are particularly good to help us get a good night's sleep and maybe any we should avoid which we okay. thought <laughs> yeah so the ones that really really spring to mind would be um so first of all there's, there's like two um first of all foods that um contain magnesium okay so with that you you're looking at um magnesium is a really relaxing mineral which quite a few of us are deficient in we tend to have high levels of um calcium in our diets but not so much magnesium and they need to be you know in in a decent ratio to help us to relax um so magnesium is is really good it helps to relax the nerves as well um magnesium foods would be your um leafy greens um your spinach your kale your cabbage all of those um nuts and seeds so like cashews almonds pumpkin seeds sunflower seeds um avocado as well and that's avocado is quite nice because it's also got your, you know, your important fats in there as well. Um, probably my favourite would be dark chocolate. Oh, I love um, <laughs> you, you look for sort of 70% or more. Um, but obviously be careful with the, with the dark chocolate or chocolate in general, because it does contain caffeine and caffeine can keep you awake. We'll come on to the caffeine in a minute. Um, yeah, the caffeine can keep you awake, so you you'd need to be a little bit careful with the dark chocolate. I never knew. Um, that. Sorry, I never knew that. I'm a bit shocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, chocolate's great, but there's there's positive and the negative of it. Okay. Um, the other types of foods that are quite useful as well are the foods that um, contain tryptophan. Um, and tryptophan is is um, an amino acid like neurotransmitter, um, and, but it helps us to produce serotonin, which is really good for balancing the, the natural sort of sleep cycle. Um, so foods that contain tryptophan would be uh, turkey, chicken, nuts, dairy, um, oily fish, eggs and bananas. I think as well which is a weird one but um but yeah they they all can be quite good at bedtime which is why traditionally people used to have like a, a hot milky drink didn't they um oh, to help contains tryptophan the trouble is if you then mix it with like cocoa powder or something um that can have the opposite effect because the cocoa is gonna sort of hype you up so so yeah um so foods, uh, do you asked for foods to avoid, didn't you, as well? I think mainly um, sort of spicy foods. Spicy foods, chilli um, can be a stimulant. Oh, okay. Basically, that, that would hype you up before bedtime, um, which is probably not ideal. Also, um, coming back to, we, I think we, we mentioned heavy meals, didn't we? If you have a heavy meal, like, too late at night, that's really going to sit with you, like you said, make you feel uncomfortable. Um, and also, if your body is still in like digestion mode, it's not going to be able to relax and go into that like switch off mode. Yeah. So, yeah, if your body is really busy trying to break down that huge meal that you've just had. Also, if it's high fat, high fat is is much more difficult to um, to digest, as is some of the red meats um like a, a a meal with say a big steak is going to be much harder to digest than like a simple fish dish so um so yeah what watch out for that uh what else uh, the caffeine let's come back to the caffeine so your tea your coffee um chocolate and like fizzy drinks contain caffeine um again they have like a stimulant effect um and then alcohol people take have alcohol because they think it's going to relax them which initially it does but then it can be a stimulant okay and 
I mean, fluids is is another thing, isn't it, as well? If you have a lot of um, general fluids and alcohol and stuff, anything that makes you wee, I mean, tea and coffee are diuretics anyway. Yeah. Um, so you probably don't want those um, before bed because you're going to be up during the night. And I, <laughs> I was like, God, why did I drink that massive mug of tea? I got up like, oh, <laughs> Yeah, you want that full night's sleep, don't you? So that you hit all of those different um, levels of, of the sleep cycle that we need. Um, so, yeah, be careful with, like, the fizzy drinks and things. Yeah, like um, green tea has a lot of caffeine in it as well. Actually, some green teas have more caffeine in it than coffee. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't drink green tea. It, it just makes me go red. It's just like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow, energy drink. Intolerance there for me. Um, but, yeah, also... Um, Something I found out recently, nicotine in tobacco and obviously cigarettes and stuff, um, that can affect our sleep as well. Oh, okay. So, yeah, another one to, um, but yeah. Yeah, so generally, you know, keep your diet good. Don't go too high in sugar or fat. Um, keep blood sugar stable um, and, and avoid the real sort of stimulants. I think also if if you've got a food intolerance, um, that can have like a stimulating effect on you, which is why in children, um, sometimes a a child will um, act in like a hyperactive way when they've got a food intolerance. Whereas adults, I think it tends to bring out bloating and digestive problems and energy and stuff like that, like probably more like low energy. Um, in children, it often comes out as, as hyperactivity. So... Yeah, because we thought... Um... They tested Harrison for, uh, he had a food test actually through the doctors because they wanted to see if he had a, a milk allergy because mm -hmm. sleep was just so terrible at one point. Um, it's come back negative, so we're still <laughs> working our way through all the different foods. Yeah, but just remember that an allergy is different to intolerance. Oh, okay. And the NHS, as far as I know, um, only test for allergy. They don't test for intolerance. So, okay, so you might still have a mild intolerance, hypothetically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, that's really good to know. And you do the you do the testing, don't you, Jackie? Yes. Yeah. With the children, I test from about four years upwards because okay. they're tiny and fidgety <laughs> and <laughs> they don't want to play. But yeah, yeah no, I I test all ages, sort of above four, and okay. and obviously give lots of nutritional um, advice when people come in anyway so so yeah so if people wanted to find you how would they okay so um the website is purebalancetherapy.co.uk i do have a page on facebook um if you just search pure balance by jackie barber you'll find me on facebook well, I'll, um, I'll below as well to help people sorry Put the links in the description box to help people as well. Okay, that's great. Yeah, on Instagram, I'm Pure Balance Health, I think. Yes. <laughs> I'm older than you. I have to try and remember all this stuff. Um, yeah, there is a YouTube channel, which I'm guessing you'll you'll be able to put down below. Yes, yeah. It's into there. Um, but yeah, otherwise, you know, just search Pure Balance by Jackie Barber. Um, I'm in Essex, but I also work... Um, nutrition and hypnotherapy I work via zoom as well so wherever you are in the country <laughs> give me a shout yeah well thank you so much Jackie that was really informative and it's given me lots to think about as well um good. so yeah thank you so much and you're welcome thank you good to see you Kitty and good luck with the rest of your interviews yes we've got uh three more Three more weeks, two more weeks. <laughs> <It's exciting. laughs> I'm learning a lot myself, especially when it comes to routine, because I'm atrocious. And yeah. actually setting times for like meal preparation. I sort of like had to rethink my day and my schedule, especially like coming home from a ho hospital shift, because I work in a psychiatric ward. Like I'd have to think, well, I'm going to have to cook my nice healthy meal the night before. So just a, a few juggles. Oh, batch cooking is is brilliant. Yes. Yeah. yeah. When I cook anything, I'll I'll cook like a big a big batch, and my my freezer is full of um, little boxes of different meals, so I can just go in there, pull one out in the morning, and it's and it's all done. Brilliant. Yeah. So that that is a new skill I'm learning. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, and it's just a different way of life, isn't it? And different mindset. Yeah. 
So, well, hopefully by the end of the month, we'll have you sleeping like a baby. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But my child, we have to also tackle his sleep issues. <laughs> He's the one who wakes me up usually, but yeah. Okay, oh. then. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Take care. Bye. I hope you all enjoyed that. I know I did. So let's wrap up and remember to experiment with different natural remedies and find what works for you. Share your experiences and success in the comments below and stay tuned for week three. And if you haven't already, hit that little subscribe button for more sleep improvement tips. And remember, each step you take brings you closer to a better night's sleep. So keep going, stay positive, and let's make week two a week of rejuvenation and deep sleep. And I believe in you. And if you want to download my free guide, please hit the, go to the link below in the description box and just click that free guide and you can download 101 uses for oils. And I also really want to invite you to start a sleep journal and note down when you go to bed and wake up with your mood and energy level and see the science in action and reflect, okay? Because it's really good to have something like a progress chart and you can see what actually works for you. So my beautiful people, have a beautiful day or evening or afternoon, wherever you are, and I'll see you soon. Mwah.